Welcome all to, again, the Audio Kinetic Theater. Hi, my name is Guillaume Renault. I am the technical customer support lead at Audio Kinetic. My short bio is that I love uh, technology and art. Uh, and when I say art, I mean music. And yeah, that's uh, when I was a kid, I wanted to do music or video games. And now I work at AK, so <laughs> I'm a very happy camper. The voice pipeline. What is the voice pipeline? Apart from being my favorite diagram in the WISE documentation, because it allows you to understand the steps that every sound that WISE plays goes through from its, its uh, creation until its playback. So why do we need to learn about the voice pipeline? Uh, if you ask yourself, when a sound is posted, what's needed for it to play? When should a sound get processed? And, and where is it best to change volume or insert effect? So that is w the questions that uh, understanding the voice pipeline will allow you to answer. So uh, we'll start with a very conceptual uh, overview of the voice pipeline, uh, making it high level for easy digestion. So yeah, it starts with um, a voice. So this is after uh, we've decided the voice will exist. That means after limiting system, like do we have too many voice already playing or is that voice too low to be heard? Once this decision is made and we're playing the voice or instantiating it, then these steps happen. So we start by finding the voice in memory or on disk and we start decoding if sampling rate is not uh, at the, the wise native sampling rate of typically 48K, it's gonna be resampled at that step. And if there's a, an effect directly on the source SFX in the wise project, it's gonna be applied there. Uh, moving on to the next step where uh, the volumes will be uh, calculated. So volume from voice volume on the voice, but any bus on its chain can also affect the voice volume. So these are computed there. Uh, normalization and gain can, be, can also affect the volume at this, at this point, HDR attenuation, and occlusion. And then there are more uh, computations done around positioning. Is it a 2D, 3D? Uh, do we, um, depending on position, do we feed into the center channel? Uh, attenuation? Uh, changes and multi-position. So, and all this is calculation because let's say you have a, in your bus chain, you have a plus six dB and further down, like you have a minus 10. At the end of it, it's just a minus four dB you want to apply. So that's the only volume that WISE will carry down the voice pipeline to apply it at the mixing point. So once, once that voice will reach uh, a bus that is mixing, that is where the total calculation of its volume gets applied. Instead of, you know, wasting resources, lowering it, raising it while it goes down the pipeline. All right, and uh, the best way to see these changes going through the voice pipeline is uh, not to look at a PowerPoint presentation, but to look at WISE. Please bear with me. Uh, oh, I had not planned for that, of having the... Okay, but let's do this. The interface is uh, so far away. So, yeah, this is a profiling session from the WISE Adventure Game demo project. Uh, and it's just like a beginning of the game, I walk to the village and, but yeah, uh, here I just wanna show, like I wanna look for the ambient fire, um, Sound. And actually, it's not well, so I see it there. Uh, but this is the global profiler that was showing me everything going on at that moment. But now I want to switch to uh, the voice inspector to, uh, to dig down on this specific voice. All right, this is fine. 
and that's it. So where we can see that the voice here as normalization, uh, high pass and low pass also, a voice volume, this is directly on the voice. Then here we can see the contribution of attenuation, which is applying minus infinity because we're far from that campfire at that moment. And yeah, and then you could see if other items would contribute. Uh, the bus here is giving a 3 dB boost on the master bus. But our end result for this specific moment for the sound is we can't hear it. It's virtual. Uh, is it virtual? Anyway, so it's not audible. I showed you the diagram saying it was my favorite part of documentation, but that was back in the day where we were still navigating with paper maps. Uh, these days, we use Google Maps of Voice Pipeline, which is the voice inspector. So with this, I, I never look at the diagram anymore because the diagram is cool, but then you have to say, OK, point three, what's happening there? Is it normalization or not? Anyway, it was a bit tedious. Uh, now you get the answers right away in context uh, quickly. Uh, so let's move on down the voice pipeline where there is this split. Uh, well, the voice will be sent in two directions, possibly. First, the dry path, which is the direct sound where the output bus for the sound is set. Right, this one is called dry. Once it arrives at the bus on the dry, if there's a, well, there's the bus volume and output, output bus volume that get applied at this point, and if there's an effect, it will be applied. But the sound also goes down the wet path where you can have either a, a user defined or which would be an aux bus inserted here on your object. Or if you select that this uh, sound can use game defined aux sense. So because this is every time we play this sound, it will go through that wet path. This option is for to programmatically the game will say, uh, call an API to say, now send this to the bus. Uh, a good example of this is um, an auxiliary bus that would be used for um, a, room, um, a room reverb and all that. So once your emitter gets to that room, then you start sending to the, the room uh, effect bus. Uh, going up that chain of auxiliary bus, because there could be one, there could be many. Uh, eventually, uh, they go through an audio bus that is like regrouping all these, but we say it's not mixing. But at this point, it could be still contributing to bus volume and output bus volume, but WISE is still accumulating this down the chain. Like at the aux level, at a bus level, there could be many. But only when we start to mix will the final calculated value of gain will be applied. Same for LPF, HPF, and the basic properties. I'm, I keep repeating that WISE will calculate these values and apply them only at the mixing bus. That's also why if you sometimes look at, at a voice graph, some bus will be missing. In this case, if the bus is not mixing and it is only contributing bus volumes, then it's just, you won't see it in the voice graph at the end, even if it's in your project. Because, but you will see at the connection of the bus, the dB value that was calculated. Moving on, so this is like uh, the, the two previous slides combined here, but adding the output audio device. If it's a 3D audio device, potentially it's receiving system audio objects uh, to let the endpoints do the panning and the final mix. Uh, everything that WISE mixes itself, or if there is no 3D audio, it happens in a mix. But with 3D audio enabled, we also have a pass-through for, let's say, a music or a non-diegetic sound. So if it's not position, and it will automatically uh, use the pass-through mix. Right. Volumes, volumes. I, I, there were a lot of volumes in that diagram and in that shade, in that yeah, in that chain, and but what's the difference in voice versus output volume? Let's dig in. So the voice volume and the pitch and low pass, high pass properties there, they affect the voices in, uh, that will be routed to this bus, all of them. So that's how you control everything going to this bus from one position instead of editing all of them. 
And these are relative. So if you have different voice, pitch, LPF, HPF values in your SFX, but once they hit that point, then this one is globally add or, or um, take out that amount of these properties. Uh, then a bus, if it has effects, will apply the effects, and that's where your bus volume will come into uh, like how much of the voice, all the group of voices that are mixed together, how much do we send to effects? And then output bus volume is that bus has a parent. So how much of the current bus do we send up the chain at this point? And how much uh, to the game define or or user defined auxiliary sense. And uh, now I'm gonna go on, although I gave you a sneak preview of a profiler a bit already. Uh, let's talk a bit more about profiling in WISE. Uh, we have many layouts available in WISE, but yeah, the ones for profiling is um, global scope profiling is where we will use the profiler layout that is uh, orange or a link to F6. The voice profiler was the second one I showed you to where we can see all the contribution along the voice pipeline for each uh, objects and Ys. And then there's also the game object profiler. The game object profiler is um, the Ys picture of the game. So the game will update the positions of the, the game objects, emitters, and listeners. And if using spatial audio, rooms or areas will be defined, portal will be placed. But so you can use this view to have a 3D view of your environment, but only the parts that WISE was told about, basically. So the profiler uh, has three main uh, components. Uh, capture log, um, I think that is my, the, the sentence I have written the most to my, uh, my customers. Have you looked at the capture log? Uh, because I do technical support, so they come with problems. Many clues can be found there. Uh, I strongly encourage you to always connect WISE to your game. Right, uh, second part, on the right side, you have the advanced profiler, where you see the global voice graph. All the voices playing at, one, all, uh, at once, all the buses. Uh, but yeah, uh, as I showed uh, a bit already, uh, on a small screen, when you have many voices, uh, filtering becomes very handy. Uh, because it's hard to have a, a full view of the complete structure today. And finally, at the bottom, we have the performance monitor where you can, over time, um, review statistical information like uh, how many voices, how much CPU am I using. So all these questions can be answered using the profiler. Uh, the advanced profiler, uh, you can look up how many what sound banks are currently loaded, what media is currently loaded. Next up is the voice profiler that I showed you quickly. So we reused many, um, many existing views of WISE like Project Explorer, Property Editor, and the Capture Log I am so fond of. And the voice monitor at the bottom is also part of other views. But yeah, the big, the big, uh, the core of the voice profiler is the voice explorer, which lists you every single voice. And we don't do a, in the profiler, when you look at the voice graph, if you have 10 instances of one sound playing, we will have one with a times 10 next to it. Here you will have the list of the 10 of them. Each instance appears here because the goal here is to search and find the voice of interest or voices of interest, select them and then they, they appear in the middle of Voice Inspector, their single voice pipeline for the one that is currently selected, and the list on the right allows you to uh, dig down and see, basically answer the, the question. Before the voice profiler, we always ask ourselves, or the question was, where did that volume come from? And it was a very difficult thing to answer sometimes. Now the voice profiler tells you exactly what what item in your voice pipeline modified the volume to the current value. And the third uh, big profiler layout is the game object profiler. So as I was saying, like a 3D view. So this is a scene that uses uh, rooms and geometry of spatial audio. So it's kind of busy, but yeah, it's to show that everything that WISE was told exists in the game uh, can be displayed here. 
in the game Object 3D Viewer. On the bottom left, we also have uh, the game state monitor. So that allows you to see what your game parameters or RTPC control game parameters, what value are they currently giving for each of your currently uh, instantiated game objects. And finally, we have, again, a voice monitor uh, that is useful well, yeah, because if you have a good discipline to color code your categories, it, it, it's very, um, a very compelling picture of your current mix and allows you to uh, also navigate the timeline for uh, the view in general.